candidates in this election are eligible for presidential candidate broadcasts. This is the first of two programs. Each candidate is allotted a maximum of 10 minutes. The order of the first presidential candidate broadcast is determined by the alphabetical ordering of the names as reflected in the electoral roll. This order will be reversed for the second presidential candidate broadcast. The candidates are Mr. Ng Kok Song, Mr. Thaman Chimugaratnam, and Mr. Tan Kin Lian. We begin with Mr. Ng Kok Song. My fellow Singaporeans, I'm Ng Kok Song. I'm standing for the office of the elected presidency as a non-partisan candidate. I was born in Kankar in 1948. The people in those days had little. It was all about survival. The PAP led Singapore to independence. With sound policies and fiscal prudence, they lifted us up from third world poverty to a first world country. I studied hard and worked my way up in life. This is the story of Singapore, the story of the sons and daughters of Singapore. Singapore today has a lot more at stake. We have built up three treasures that are cornerstones of our nation building. The first is our financial treasure, our reserves and our national savings. The second is our social treasure, the harmony between the different races, religions and communities. And the third is our public administration treasure, effective national institutions that are mission-driven and corruption-free. We cannot take these for granted. Every generation must protect and invest in these treasures for the next generation. The government has been keeping these three treasures safe since our independence. They have done well thus far. But the question that confronts Singaporeans now is, what if something goes wrong with our governance. We have so much at stake. That is why the elected presidency is so important. Mr. Lee Kuan Yew and past national leaders created the elected presidency as a second key to the treasures. They had the foresight that we needed more long-term stabilizers. The Constitution states that the President cannot be a member of any political party. The elected presidency must be above the partisan politics of Parliament so that independent, able men and women may too rise up to the occasion. I strongly believe that the time has come for the elected president to be non-partisan. In other words, a president who has not belonged to any political party and a president who is not endorsed by any political party. The president should be independent of any political party so that the president can exercise the important responsibilities without fear or favour. The president is our constitutional check on the basis or corrupt persons to key public service positions. Singapore can no longer take for granted that we will always have good and honest government. An own self-check, own self system is not reliable. We need an external check functioning like an independent external auditor in good corporate governance. Thus far, 
past elected presidents have been affiliated to or been endorsed by the ruling political party. The time has come in this presidential election for a welcome change. I stand as a non-partisan candidate for the elected presidency. I am not endorsed by government or any political parties. I have spent 45 years in public service, investing our reserves at GIC and MAS. I have spent my life building GIC as a world-class institution and steered the GIC to many crises and complex economic realities. I have led the development of Singapore's financial services industry through the creation of the Singapore International Monetary Exchange, CIMEX, and the Wealth Management Institute, WMI. So I will bring to bear the experience needed to safeguard our treasures and the commitment to build up Singapore's institutional independence. I pledge to work constructively and impartially with government of the day to further the interests of Singaporeans. I will not engage in megaphone diplomacy, but neither will I shy away from asking important questions, no, however difficult those may be. I understand how the government machinery works, and I know how to be involved effectively without being disruptive. The President is the symbol of unity for Singaporeans. I advocate for do well, do right, and do good for Singaporeans. To do well is to have the resilience of mind and body. I have been a long-standing advocate for good mental health, and, and even Mr. Lee Kuan Yew knew the power of meditation to calm the mind and stay centred. To do right is to live by a code of integrity, to do the best we can for our families, our friends and our communities. In sickness and in health, in good times and bad, through thick and thin. And to do good is to build a more caring and kinder society. Over the years, I've advocated for and contributed to palliative care, the disability sector, children's charities, and animal welfare groups. I pledge to give my voice to the youth, to the elderly, and to the vulnerable communities so that no one may be left behind in Singapore's progress. Globally, I will work hard to expand Singapore's space in the world. Over the course of my career, I have engaged many government leaders, corporate executives and investors from around the world. These are valuable global networks that I can leverage on in Singapore's interests. My fellow Singaporeans, we have had five presidential elections. It is time we take a decisive step to strengthen the constitutional governance of Singapore. I stand as a non-partisan candidate for the elected presidency. We may have our differences of views and political affiliations, but differences must not become divisions in our society. There are many things we can do together as a society to help those in need and the underprivileged. We must stay united for the future. I humbly ask you, the people of Singapore, for your vote. Thank you. 
the next candidate is Mr. Dharman Shamugaratnam. Sadara Sadari Sikilian, Banakam, Saga Kutimakale, Kari Thongpao, my fellow Singaporeans. I have dedicated my life to serving Singapore, our home. Nothing could be more meaningful to me. My greatest privilege has been to work actively on the ground week after week for more than two decades, listening to people's hopes and concerns, helping them overcome setbacks in life, and sharing their joys. With our older folk who want to remain active and in good health, and whose contributions and sacrifices we must honour. With our caregivers, who may have given up their own jobs and often need support and care themselves. With our middle-aged and mature workers, who worry if their jobs will be secure. With our young families, who remind us why we must grow opportunities for all and help every Singaporean to make the best of the future. They have each deepened my motivation to serve and my commitment to making Singapore a fairer, more compassionate and inclusive society. Government policies are important in achieving this. However, a fair and inclusive society goes much deeper than government policies. It is about all of us. It is about the respect and friendship we extend to each other, regardless of our background and educational achievements. Regardless of race or religion or any other differences, and it is about knowing that if one group of our people loses hope, we will all have less hope as Singaporeans. Now, more than before, we must deepen our solidarity as Singaporeans so that we raise each other up. My fellow Singaporeans, I believe I can now best serve Singapore, not in politics, but as your president, standing above politics. As you know, I've resigned from the PAP and as senior minister and from all my positions in government to run in this election. I have made this major decision because the elected presidency will become more important in the years to come. The challenges our country faces will grow. We are at a time of transition, both in Singapore and internationally. We are moving into a new, more difficult and more complex era. The world is increasingly divided and unstable. Global crises, economic, geopolitical and environmental, are already breaking out more often. They will test all countries and especially smaller countries like Singapore. At home in Singapore, we are becoming a democracy with more diverse views. I regard this as inevitable and healthy and have said so repeatedly. But our real challenge as Singaporeans is to ensure that this diversity of views does not lead us to a more divided society, like many others. We must be a democracy with more space for different views and a thriving civil society. But to be confident of our future, we must also be a society with a strong centre of shared aspirations and respect for all citizens. If I'm fortunate enough to be elected by you, I pledge to bring my full experience and capabilities on the ground nationally and internationally to serve as your president for this new and more challenging era. I will serve you with all my heart. I will give active attention to the traditional long-standing roles of the president to serve as a unifying figure at home and to advance Singapore's interests abroad. I will also draw on my knowledge and reputation for independent thinking to fulfill the additional constitutional duties of the elected president to safeguard our reserves and the integrity of the public service. How will I serve in each of these areas? Firstly, we can and must strengthen a culture of respect for all Singaporeans in the years to come. It cannot be achieved top down. It will be my mission to support initiatives on the ground that develop this respect for all. Respect every skill and every job. Respect those who start life with a disadvantage, those with special needs, and anyone who needs a second or third chance. And do our utmost to help them uplift themselves and make the most of life. Respect our senior citizens and extend care and friendship to the growing number who live alone. 
respect for all, young and old, who need support to preserve their mental well-being. Respect our homemakers, including those who want to return to the workplace after some years of looking after the family. Respect for different views and political leanings. Respect and support for talents in the arts and sports who will inspire us and enrich our Singapore identity. Respect our different faiths and expand interaction and understanding between our diverse cultures so that we add depth and resilience to Singapore's multicultural identity. I speak from experience and a long track record on the ground for all to see of connecting with people from all walks of life, constantly seeking to bridge differences in views and building community spirit. Secondly, if you elect me as president, I will also build on my experience in government and my international standing to promote Singapore's interests and to project our voice of reason in an increasingly turbulent world. We must never become just another small country. I have been flying the Singapore flag high internationally for many years and will work actively to strengthen our existing partnerships and build new ones. Thirdly, I will be thorough and impartial in fulfilling the constitutional duties of the President with regard to the prudent use of our nation's reserves and ensuring we have an honest and first-rate public service. Our reserves were hard-earned over generations. They reflect the unique foresight of our founding leaders and the willingness of generations of Singaporeans to save for a better and safer future. They give Singapore significant advantage in a profoundly uncertain future. Our reserves must be made to last. I have been a leader in government financial policies for many years as Minister for Finance and Deputy Prime Minister. I was also chairman of MAS and chairman of the GIC's Investment Strategies Committee over the last 12 years. So I come with deep knowledge and experience of how and when we should spend from our reserves to serve Singapore's needs and how they are safeguarded for the future. In holding the second key to our reserves, I will ensure they serve the interests of today's generation of adults still working or retired as well as the young who do not yet have the vote and future generations of Singaporeans. However, as president, I will bring more than deep expertise and long experience. I also bring a more basic orientation, the independence of mind that I have held on to throughout my life and my belief that we can make Singapore a fairer and better society. They are what I've been known for both within and outside government. My path has never been predictable or assured. In my youth, I was completely occupied with sports. It was what taught me my most valuable lessons in life, valuing every member of the team, respecting my opponents, and knowing how to win and lose graciously. I made my way up the public service as a non-scholar. I had setbacks along the way, but my knees never buckled and my integrity was never in doubt. I eventually progressed to the highest levels of the public service, serving as managing director of the MAS. Through my many years in government as a minister, I have held onto my ideals of social justice and inclusiveness and worked continually year after year to build consensus on practical and sustainable ways to uplift workers and ordinary citizens' lives. While the president stands apart from the government, and does not make policies, I will never waver from this purpose in my life and independence of mind as I fulfill my duties. My fellow Singaporeans, I am an optimist in our future. We will go through ups and downs, but we are still a unique place where we can work together to make the future better for all. By continuing to deal with difficulties forthrightly, and to build and rebuild trust in the Singapore system. By respecting each other and listening to every voice and every heart. And by working actively to create space for Singapore in a more endangered world. I am convinced we can do this together. Majula Singapura. 
The final candidate is Mr. Tan Ken Lian. I am participating in the upcoming election to give the people of Singapore a chance to vote for a president that is independent of the ruling government. The president has to perform two key duties as set out in the constitution. They are to safeguard our past reserves and to protect the integrity of our public service. If elected, I intend to perform these two duties diligently, honestly, and to the best of my abilities. I will now state how I intend to carry out these duties if I were elected as president. I deal with the first duty. Our past reserves comprise of a large sum that probably runs into several hundreds of billion dollars, maybe more. It is vitally important that the reserves are invested soundly to produce a good rate of return over the long term, covering five years or longer, and is not exposed to high risk. Apart from ensuring that the past reserves are invested prudently, I intend to work with the government to ensure that the past reserves are used wisely for the benefit of our current and future generations. I now deal with the second duty. It is also vitally important that we have the right people at the top levels of our public service. While we should continue to value the contributions of our scholars who have excellent thinking skills, we should also value the knowledge and experience of people who have spent many years on the job and know the ground well. We need different types of people those with talents and those with practical experience to form a good team. I wish to see that the people who have gained knowledge and practical experience from many years of dedicated service are given the opportunity to advance to positions of leadership. I will be influenced by these factors in approving the recommendations of the people to be appointed into the top levels of our public service. With the knowledge and experience from 30 years as the Chief Executive Officer of NTUC Income Insurance Cooperative, I am confident that I will be able to perform this two key duties well. I intend to do so for the benefit of the people of Singapore. Now, I must, clearly, I must clarify that I don't intend to be an adversary to the elected government. On the contrary, I hope to work in collaboration with the government to achieve the goals stated above. My vision is to build a nation where the people are united and live in harmony. I believe that the people will be united when they feel financially secure and are able to look beyond their immediate concerns and think about the greater good of our society. This was a spirit of unity and pride that Singaporeans felt 50 years ago. We need to rekindle that spirit. I come from a humble background. Throughout my entire life, which spans 75 years as of now, 
I have been in close touch with the ordinary people. I know of their hardship and aspirations. If I am elected into the high office of the president, I intend to remain in close touch with the ordinary people. I believe that I can perform my duty best if I am in touch with the pulse and heartbeat of the people. I ask for the support of the people to give me a strong mandate so that I can provide an independent perspective and act in collaboration with the ruling government to deal with the challenges of the future. Thank you.